Desiree here from Bird Stoneworks and I had some questions about soldering little embellishments, little balls like this on the onto the piece so I thought I'd kind of demonstrate that today. I know I had responded to some people and tried to explain in writing how I did it but figured I would make a video. That would be fun to show people. So, um, I have move my camera down here. I've got some scrap metal. I have uh, sterling silver. I have fine silver. I have copper. And I have brass. And I actually wanted to go over the process of actually making the balls. It's really simple. Um, most of you have probably already accidentally done it. <laughs> or if you've just gotten mad and melted your piece uh, on purpose, you can watch it ball up. But there's a little bit of an art to it, only in that if you overheat, you can cause unwanted things, like the metal will bubble and we'll, you'll get like a ball but it'll have a hole in it and that's uh, not really useful. So, um, let me move my piece a little closer. Um, a minute, bear with me while I get the camera kind of focused. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start with the sterling silver. I usually like to make a few at a time. And I'm going to actually use this. Shoot, maybe I'm a little too close. <laughs> Can't really see. There we go. Okay. Um, I use this big, I call this my dragon because it's just got an enormous flame. This is a butane torch. This is the large butane torch from Rio Grande. And it's perfect for this sort of thing. So, it's real simple. I'm just gonna heat and kind of, you can kind of chase the metal into a ball. And as soon as it forms a good ball, you let go of the heat. Because if you keep heating it, it will kind of boil. And that's not good. Actually, you know what? Well, I'm using my charcoal block and so it's it's getting what the heck? It's gonna be a little, there we go. It's getting some of the little things in it. There we go. You can kind of watch it curl up. There we go. Perfect. And as they cool you'll see that they they're they're sitting on a flat surface. These balls are naturally going to have one side that's a little bit more flat. And this is a good thing because that's where they're going to sit when you solder them. And another thing too, I'm going to show you the difference. This is when you ball up sterling silver. Um, it turns, it oxidizes and it turns black. Uh, so then you would put it into the pickle pot, which I'll do right now. And then I'll show you what the fine silver does. It's really wonderful for making little, little BBs. So this is actually, these are little cuts of fine silver bezel. Actually, no, I need a new charcoal block pretty scuzzy. But I'm going to lay them out. This is a good way to tell if you've got fine silver or sterling silver too. You can heat it up and see what it does. Um, so I'm going to show you heating up the fine silver until it for forms a ball. And I went ahead and switched to my smith torch because my, uh, my butane torch was acting a little funny. I don't know. So... All right, so I'm just going to heat it and watch it ball up so quick, 
so quick with the, the oxygen added, it's so much hotter. There we go. You can see it. Now, the biggest difference here is with the fine silver, if you notice, it stays shiny. It doesn't oxidize when you turn it into a BB. So, that's one way to tell if you have sterling or if you have fine. Just cut a little bit off of it and then ball it up and see what it does and look how it behaves. So, go ahead and quench these and then I will show you brass and copper. They both behave a little bit differently. Brass is actually the most difficult to, um, to get to ball up without getting kind of a strange texture, but you can always polish that out. So here's some brass. Go ahead and do three. Oh, well, four. Okay. <laughs> that little tip decided to make its way onto the floor. Get my torch. Light it up. Brass takes a little longer. You really have to heat it. And as you heat, you kind of have to, you're almost like following the metal as it, as it pulls inward. Come on. See, doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. And done. We'll do this one. Oh, that's a nice one. Here. Yeah, there they are. Brass will stay glowing a little longer too. And the brass looks a little gold, you know, after you it's sticking to my board. Just throw those in the quench water there. And finally, copper. Those are bigger pieces. Bigger pieces obviously are going to take longer and sometimes they break off into two separate pieces. As you can see the copper balls up a little faster. Making these is a good way to practice uh, just familiarizing yourself with how a metal behaves when you heat it and how much heat it's going to take before it starts to melt. It's really important that you recognize, you know, the color of the metal. It helps in your soldering, actually. That one's stuck in the hole. Shoot. Once you quench the water, or the co <laughs> the water, once you quench the copper in the water, you know, it turns that nice red color. But beforehand, it's black, just like silver. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two. Until you either pickled them or quenched them. Come on. Well, that's just really in there. I don't know what it's stuck to. There we go. That's out. My poor board. I need a new one. Okay, then I will, uh, once I get to a point where I can show you how to solder them onto a piece, then that's what we will do. Okay, so I've got my my little bezel and everything's been soldered on. Everything went really well with that. And I have my little ball embellishments that I picked out. I keep them in a hill container thing. These are really great for keeping uh, gemstones and, and the like. So um, 
the ones I just made earlier, I went ahead and threw in here. And uh, I went ahead and kind of decided on my layout. I went with a brass one in the center and then silver on either side. So um, the next step is to get the back of these a little more flat. As you can, I don't know if you can see that, it probably isn't going to focus. But the ends are kind of, uh, or the bottom, it's flat but it's a little bit rough so we're going to sand it. And this is just a piece of 220 grit that I got at Harbor Freight. Um, and then I take, actually not these, I like these, these bigger tweezers. And I just kind of sand. You can't even see what I'm doing. Fantastic. Need to get the camera a little bit more angled differently. And I just sand until I'm happy with the bottom. Whoop. And they do go flying. <laughs> but that looks good. Let me show you again. These little ones can be a little bit tricky. But. Yep, see, because they are round, they can be a little bit tricky to grab. Sometimes you can just kind of take your finger. Nope, that's not going to work. That's not big enough. Whee! <laughs> Maybe it's not the best method. There we go. Sometimes it's better to actually take pliers like this. You can get a better grip. There. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. This one. Yep. These little ones are really going to be tricky. I'm just using these nice, uh, I think these are chain nose. They have the nice curved nose. These are my favorite pliers. Um, I got them for Christmas from my husband uh, about two years ago. And, I mean, I've just worn them out. They're, and the grips are falling apart and everything, but they still work really well. Okay, one more. Now the next step uh, is to we're going. I want the I want the balls to be down here, you know. So I'm. This is where I'm going to flow some solder. I'm going to flow easy solder um, over the area, and then I'm going to sweat solder. It's called sweat soldering. Uh, sweat solder the the little embellishments on. So when I flow when I'm flowing a good amount of solder onto an area, I like to just use the wire. Um, I use the Pallians for just about everything else, but I have some easy wire solder that I do typically use, and when I bring the piece to temperature, I'm just going to touch down a little bit and just kind of get, get the solder in the area where I want it to go. So 
of course, first we flux. I've been using this uh, Batterns self-pickling flux. I switched for a while from, I usually use the, the handy flux here. Um, but I found I kept leaving the jar open and then it dries out and then I have to reconstitute it. And so I switched to this and I don't know if I, I don't like that it's so liquidy you can't really direct it where to go. But I also like that when you heat it, it doesn't bubble as much. It does a little bit, but not too bad. So I'm just going to paint it over my area. probably good. And I don't even pickle this. Um, I guess you could. Maybe you should. Uh, probably should. I don't. Um, what I end up doing is I kind of use the heat from this to... well, you'll see. So, what I'm going to do is just coat the bottom and put the ball in place where I want it. You hear it's, it, uh, it sticks. So, actually I didn't want it there. Place it a little higher up. Perfect. I kind of like to butt mine up against the bezel, um, more. This gives it that extra layer of, I'm just going to put my flux over here, layer of, uh, Solidity, I guess. There. And again. And again. Oh, oh, oh. Right there. You could put little embellishments all the way around an entire bezel, I guess, if you wanted. So now I have everything in place. And so what I'm going to do is flow the solder onto the ball, the solder that's already there. But I'm going to switch to my tripod and heat from underneath. So, excuse me while I adjust the camera. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe does it want to, to go? There we go. Okay. So I've switched to my tripod. And I'm taking carefully move my piece. Oh no, there's a little ball. That's okay, we can put it back. Realistically, you could have done the entire thing on a tripod. But this is a big heat sink, and I don't like wasting that much oxygen. It's expensive. Okay, put it back on there, you. Make sure you have everything right where you want it before you solder. That's the general rule of soldering to begin with. And I'm going to need a nice big flame. I've been using my number seven tip for this entire time. It creates the largest flame. This is the Smith Little Torch. Oh, Don't do that. <laughs> I didn't say I wasn't clumsy. 
but picks are my friend because I can kind of manipulate and put things where I want them. Real big flame. Yeah. Big and hot, and then get underneath. You want your pick at the ready just in case anything moves, but typically. There they go, there they go, and there we go. You can see the balls when the solder flows onto them. You, it's really cool because you can see them kind of suck in and, and they suck into place. They, they follow the heat and they get pulled right up against the bezel and right into the corner where they need to be. It's pretty magical. But I bet you dollars to donuts that one of them didn't solder on. That's usually the case. So I'm going to quench it and then we'll take a look. I didn't mean to say quench it. I meant to say pickle it. Well, I'm kind of doing both. Sometimes I quench in my pickle, and sometimes I quench and then I pickle. All right. So now, now that they're on, I usually take a pick and I just, I kind of, I just make sure they're on there. I make sure that if I, I can even do it with a fingernail. Just try to take them off, and if they don't come off, then you're good. And it looks like everything actually did solder on, so that's pretty exciting. And so the only thing left to do here is trim, you know, well, trim everything. I'm going to trim around the little embellishments, and then I'll, you know, I'll add my bale and I'll set my stone. So, uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching.